Hi, I'm Kerr Fakreldine with the Chicago Area Archivists, and welcome to Season 2 of Chicago Open Archives. This season, we will be diving into the archival origin stories of archive professionals from around the Chicagoland area. Today, I am here with Beth Locke, an archival specialist at Chicago Public Library's Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection of Afro-American History and Literature. Beth, thanks a lot for coming in. Ah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So... Before we get into your background, when you're trying to explain to people, say, at a family gathering, what archives are, what an archivist does, what do you say? It depends how long the conversation is supposed to be. (laughs) I have a very large Irish Catholic family, so sometimes I take a cop out and just say I'm a historian. But when I'm talking to my immediate family, I try to explain that I work at a public library, and an archive is like a library where you can't check materials out because they're one-of-a-kind materials. They're special items that have to have security, and they need a bit more protection. So what sort of things are the highlights? Ooh, that's very hard to say because we have a very wide range of materials. So the Harsh Research Collection documents the African-American experience um, in Chicago and also the greater Midwest. And we have a number of materials that span everything, <clears throat> excuse me, from the Great Migration to the Black Arts Movement, civil rights, covers education, politics, literature. It's a very wide collection. It's hard to choose a favorite, but we have the Abbott Sunstack Family Papers, the Chester Commodore Papers, the Papers of CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality, the Chicago Chapter Records. It's really a wide variety of materials. Did you have a background in African-American history before you became an archivist? I did not. That was something I had to learn. I had a strong background in archival theory and management, especially processing. But I had to learn a lot about African-American history on the job and before I took the the job as well. How did you learn that on the job? A lot of reading. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I was very lucky because before I started as a full-time archivist, I worked for three years processing collections through the Mapping the Stacks Project and the Black Metropolis Research Consortium. So I was a graduate student intern working with undergraduate uh, students to process collections at Harsh. And then I also worked um, as a Harsh Archival Project processing intern as well. So I probably processed about, oh my goodness, a dozen to 15 collections before I was hired to work as an archivist. So I knew those collections very well. And as an archivist, you always get to know collections better the more you work with them and the more reference work that you do. So to go back even before that, even before undergrad, Mm -hmm. when you were in high school and thinking about what you wanted to do as a career, did you know about archives? Did you think you might become an archivist? (laughs) Well, I always loved history, but I thought that I was going to grow up to be the female Indiana Jones. I loved all types of history. Um, Irish history, English history, and then that kind of spread when I came to Chicago. So I grew up in a small town in Minnesota, and then I came to Chicago for undergrad. And that's when I actually started to study history at North Park University. And I did my first internship at the Chicago History Museum. (laughs) And they didn't have any space in the archives to do an internship. So I actually started out there in their public events department, showing brides, the museum, and giving tours. But because I did that for a summer, I got 15 minutes with the archivist there at the end of the summer to interview her. And her passion for archives was amazing. So what then led you to start thinking about becoming a professional archivist yourself? I looked into working in museums, but I really enjoyed the history of of archives and working with researchers and processing collections. It was wonderful to dive into somebody else's life or an organization's history, organize it, and then be able to present it to researchers. Do you still process collections? All the time. Have you processed any that you'd like to tell us about this summer? Well, right now we're working on the Thomas Todd papers. Thomas Todd was a civil rights attorney here in Chicago. He worked with the Office of Civil Rights, and he was a famous speaker. He had the nickname TNT because he was dynamite when he was giving up and giving lectures. So we're documenting his papers through blogs as we process it with a few interns. For someone who's never processed a collection, what is that like? <laughs> what, what happens in that process? A lot of alphabetizing, a lot of organization. You start off by breaking it down into series. 
and then you organize that series. So for example, you might have a series of correspondence, of AV, biographical material. So it could AV? AV, audiovisual materials. Thank you. <laughs> for those of you who don't know. And I really love processing collections. I kind of thrive when you put me in a quiet space and I get to organize everything. Not everybody is like that, but I really enjoy it. What's something else that you get to do in your job that you really enjoy? At Harsh Research Collection, I get to work with two great archivists, Beverly Cook and Tracy Drake. Two librarians, uh, Denise English and Cynthia Fife Townsell, our curator, Mr. Miller. And the team is rounded out by our senior clerk, Lucinda Samuel. So we work as a team and get to do a little bit of everything, which is one of the reasons I really like it. We get to work on exhibits. So in February, we had an exhibit, All Power to the People, celebrating the legacy of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party open. That'll be open through December. So it was a real joy to talk to Black Panther, former Black Panther members, and to organize their materials into an exhibit that tells their story as the way they want to tell it and then to work with them to create a series of programs with the curator of the exhibit, Tracy Drake. We also get to work with researchers. All the archivists take turns sitting on the reference desk. We also do outreach, creating events, and we work to bring in new collections and process those as well. Did you attend library school after undergrad? Yep, I did a joint program. I uh, studied at Loyola University and did a master's in public history. And then I also studied and received my master's of uh, library information science at Dominican. What was your focus in your public history courses? Archival science. <laughs> what was the first collection you worked on? That was at the Women in Leadership Archive at Loyola University. I was lucky enough to work with Beth Myers when she was director. And I believe it was one of the Sisters of the Blessed Virgin Mary, one of the BVMs, who taught at Mundelein. I believe that was one of my first collections. What do you remember about it? Oh, those nuns were amazing. They worked in civil rights themselves, and they, uh, they were an educational order. And the collection was not easy to organize. I remember that. The, the collection was kind of all over the place. It came in in a big box, and we had to organize it. And it was really hard determining series. So we went ahead and kind of did everything in alphabetical order. But I remember it was not an easy collection to process for the first time. So when a researcher goes to use that collection, what might be something that they might find in a collection like that? Well, that one was interesting because all of the nuns had to have a psychological evaluation before they joined the order. And I remember we ended up taking those out because of privacy issues. But some of those psychological evaluations were very interesting to read, which I think people will be able to do so in about 20 years. But it was just very telling because they had journals that documented life as a BVM about 40 years ago. So between the journals and the photographs, I think it'll be really informative for researchers. Do privacy issues often come up with collections? All the time. I mentioned the Thomas Todd papers earlier. We had to take out and return to him any confidential files that he had from working with individuals on their legal briefs and any of their legal papers, educational papers we have to take out. It's amazing how many letters people get that they accidentally pass on to us in terms of tax records, social security numbers, things like that. So if someone is planning to donate a collection to an archive and is worried that their personal information is going to be exposed, is that a legitimate concern? No, we'll always work with the donor. We'd never want to put anything in a collection that would embarrass them or make them worry about the safety of their, their personal records. Back to thinking about it from sort of an archival education point of view, if someone were a high school student or a college student and thinks they might want to become an archivist, what advice would you have for them as far as what they should focus on, what they should be spending their time on? An internship or many internships is key. You really don't know if you're going to be a good fit as an archivist until you dive in and start doing some of the work. There's a job out there for anybody in the archival field, but you won't know what tasks you want to do until you actually start to do them. So internships will give you that experience so you know if you want to be a quiet processing intern at an archive or if you're more gregacious and you want to work in events. 
You and I met at the Midwest Archives Conference earlier this spring. What are archives conferences like? They can be a little intimidating at first, usually because they can be quite big events. The Midwest Archives Conference in Detroit, there were a mix of people from all different types of archives. But what's lovely about that is you can go to a number of panels on a number of different issues. So you can go to a panel that um, is about diversity in the archives, or you can go to a panel which is about archival events and bringing in more researchers, or you can go to something that's a bit more technical, uh, something on, I don't know, archive space, and you can learn about it, and you can talk to other people about projects that you're doing, and you can learn and uh, possibly get ideas from others. And what is archive space? An archival management tool, some would say a solution for managing your archival databases and your finding aids, and it can be a great way to present your archives to the public. What is a finding aid? (laughs) A finding aid is a list of materials in an archival collection. It also provides context about the archival collection. So if you went to the website of the Harsh Research Collection, would you be able to find finding aids to see what might be in the collection before you decide to visit the site? Yes, and we highly recommend that researchers do that. It doesn't happen all the time, but the Harsh Research Collection is actually one of four repositories at the Chicago Public Library. We also have Northside Neighborhood History Collection at Sulzer Regional Library, the Special Collections at Harold Washington Library Center, and the Municipal Records Collection at Harold Washington Library Center. So if you go to Chicago Public Library and browse the list of A to Z finding aids, then you'll actually get a comprehensive list of all of the archival collections held at CPL to researchers without first being discovered by archivists, should I say. And before I let you go, I want to express my sympathy for the loss of your colleague, Michael Flug. Would you care to tell us a little bit about who he was? Yeah, we lost Michael about two weeks ago, and that was really hard. He worked at the Harsh Research Collection for 20 years, I worked with Michael Flug for seven years. Uh, He brought in numerous collections related to civil rights because he himself was a civil rights organizer with the Congress of Racial Equality. He spent a lot of time in North Carolina and Mississippi, Alabama. He traveled throughout the South and helped uh, fight segregation in housing and voting. He actually hired me to work on the Harsh Archival Processing Project. And so I've worked with him the last seven years. And since he's passed away, I've been hearing all of these amazing stories about Michael. And nothing about Michael really surprises me anymore. I mean, I'll always remember taking the red line north with him. And he did that for 20 years, all the way up to Loyola. And he trained himself to fall asleep on the train so he would never waste a minute. So I'll always remember turning to talk to Michael. And he'd be asleep on my shoulder. And then he would kind of jostle himself awake and say, oh, I'm sorry, dear. (laughs) But he was just a really great human being, and uh, the knowledge that he had about African-American history is remarkable. Thank you very much, Beth Locke, Archival Specialist of Chicago Public Library's Vivian G. Harsh Research Collection of Afro-American History and Literature. I'm Kerr Fakreldeen. This is Chicago Open Archives. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Chicago Area Archivist COA podcast. We would like to thank our gracious interviewees, the Chicago Area Archivist Steering Committee, Engineer Allison Shine Holmes, WFMT, and the Project Chair Danielle Nowak for their time and efforts. To hear more, you can find both Season 1 and 2 of the COA podcast available on YouTube. For more information on the Chicago Area Archivists, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or our website, chicagoarchivists.org.